Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. You okay? Yeah, I... What the hell is going on, Dre? You think you can just hook up with me and then not tell me that you just got done stomping out my best friend? That's what we're doing. I should have told you. I couldn't help it. So what do we do now? Lucius wants to have a sit down with Shine and get things back on track. What? A sit I promise you, Nessa, we're not going to screw him over. You better not, Dre. Because he's all I got. Come here. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. I respect that he's all you got. You could have more. What you said when you came to see me, if you had my musical talent, what did you mean by that? Help me get Shine to the table. I'll show you what I meant by that. I love, 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 love season three of Empire. How nope. about that? Nope. Me too. This is so nice. So let's let's catch everyone up on the travails of poor Andre. He is, I mean, I think all the brothers are having a pretty rough season. Brothers are having a rough season. Andre in particular. I mean, he's just he's been going through it since season one. You know what I mean? Just being like the outcast, the only one who doesn't sing, trying to you know do the the business side, trying to impress his father, you know, help his brothers, help the business, and just continues to just get hacked at, you know, and just you know really. Somebody who, who was very like an unsung hero for a long time and then decides he wants to, you know, take it, take claim of, of what he feels is his. You know, he's been usurped now that the father's making the brothers choose between, you know, well, well, choose between the brothers who's going to run the empire. And uh, basically, you know, all hell breaks loose and it continues to break loose now that Rhonda's passed on and the baby's gone and Vernon's gone. And it's just like a big circle of death around Andre that makes him very... You know, not depressive, but certainly depressed and eager to do anything that he can to, you know, change his circumstances. And it can get really dark. It gets really dark. And poor Cookie. Let's just talk about that. Poor she cookie. is just in a... <laughs> poor Cookie has uh, fallen on hard times. See, oh, I mean, she's fallen on hard times, but she's still, you know, very much the matriarch. Very, very, just a very strong character that Taraji has, you know, brought to life in, in a very creative, interesting way. Um, but I just, I love the mother, you know what I mean, in her and how she's able to be there for every single one of her sons when they go through some of the worst things you can go through in life, you know what I mean, with death and, you know, bipolar disorder and, and Hakeem dealing with, being you know. unable to claim his baby. <laughs> we were talking about that. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, it's, it, there's, there's a lot that happens in the empire world. It's nuts, but <clears throat> pardon me, it's, it's nuts, but you know, you gotta have somebody to be able to get this circus together. And she certainly does an amazing job at that. What is the vibe between the cast like? I see when everyone that I've talked to from Empire says that Taraji really is the mother hen of the group. She's the mother hen. I mean, we're family. We we can't not be family and do the things that we have to do. We would have like bombed and imploded a long time ago. Because of the not, horrible things you, you have know, to say to the, each other. The horrible things we say, the horrible things we do. You have to walk off of, of stage and or off of the, the screen and as we're walking off, giving a little smirk as I got you, you don't know what's coming. You know what I mean? And to, to be able to you know, do that, we have to have some sort of, or a serious sort of camaraderie between us in order to keep it going. And Taraji certainly is like, you know, it, it, it'll either, you know, succeed from the head or rot from the head. And, you know, I think we're succeeding pretty well. So, yeah. And your wife is on the show? Yes, my wife is on the show. How do you guys keep it se separate in terms of work versus relationship? And you don't have to, like, get into any details, but I'm just yeah. curious because obviously she's, I, don't, I, I can't describe her relationship on the show. It is so complicated. <laughs> I mean, she's in relationship with almost everybody on the show, the character, you know what I mean? She's another one that's like, I got to get what's mine. But, um, you know, Grace is, is just a professional. You know, I, I try to be as professional as I possibly can be. And that's what we do. You know, the, the scene where uh, yeah, uh, Rhonda went off of the, uh, the building, and, you know, that was the first scene that, that Grace and I had alone. And the way we approached that was basically, you know, I told her, hey, listen, um, baby, Andre might put his hands on Anika, and she's like, well, bring it on, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's, she's, there's a willingness there, you know, she's, she's actually a trained actress, I'm trained, she went to Irvine, I went to Yale, and, um, and just with the background that we have, we come to work, you know what I mean? And when we go home, 
that mess is it doesn't even exist in our house. You guys don't push each other off the stairs. No, no, no. no. That, that was just that was, <laughs> that was a pivotal TV. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you went to Yale. You're a trained actor. You are. You were on The Americans, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. I want to ask you about the audition process for this because Lee Daniels, I know, is very particular in how he casts. So talk to me about how you got cast. I went in there, and there was every type of like. I don't know, er, late 20s, early 30s black man you can imagine, right? There's, you know, there's some guys, you know, people like me who come in and like, you know, I, I have my solid take on the character. There's this, you know, cat that, come, that came in. He looked like he was like fresh out of jail, not lying. Another cat <laughs> came in with his acting coach and is sitting in the corner going over his lines with an acting coach at the audition. And I'm like, this, this is interesting. I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. So, you know, I'm just going to stick with my stuff. I saw the script as, you know, first of all, that was probably my 200th audition, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know how many no's, I got, probably a, 196 no's I got. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is someone who studied at the Yale School of Drama and was yeah. in Selma, by the way. I just want to say. So if this guy can handle this many no's, yeah. let I that mean, be you're an gonna, You're going to get it, you know? Uh, you're going to get it. It's, you gotta, you're you're going to have to pay at some point, either at the beginning or, you know, I, I went to school with... Uh, I'm not even going to say nothing. It doesn't matter. Uh, Lupita? Lupita? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she came yeah. out of the gate and just, you know what I mean? So you just never know how, you know, it's going to turn out for you. But ultimately, you know, you got to know who you are. You got to be prepared for, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, whether you get in there immediately or you don't get in there for a few years. So, um, you know, I, I went in with my take and Lee worked with me. You know, I think he, he worked very well with me. I did a lot more with Danny Strong, actually. Uh, who enjoyed the idea of Andre being more like uh, Iago from Othello. And um, basically, we you know, kept trying to dig into that, and one audition went to another, went to another, went to the network, and you know, we got the part. How did you find out you got the part? Uh, I, got, I got a call from my agents. But I'll tell you this, it's a, it's a crazy story. Uh, it was, my, it was the, the final test for the network I went in for, and uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, what was I doing? I was, it was four guys. I was one of the four guys. Went in, prepared. I knew this role was... You were one of the four guys? I was one of four Andre. guys that were auditioning for Andre. Damn, that must, that. that must have been nerve-wracking. I just, I blacked it out, man. They, you know, they were there for what they were there for, and I was there for what I was there for. You know what I mean? So I go in there, and I do my, my right, right before I go in, Lee's talking to me, and he's like, you know, you got to go in there, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that, and don't forget this. And uh, it, yeah. No, one more thing, and this and that too. That too. And by the right? way, that really is how Lee. <laughs> right. For real. So I go in there. You know, I had my take, and I feel like okay, I got into these nut, these notes, and it's all getting jumbled. I go in there, and I gave the worst audition I've ever given. Terrible. I walked out defeated. Like, damn, I can't believe. You know what I mean? And just frustrated all the way home, only to find out that night that um, the network watched the tapes that soon, and. Um, they got to my tape and the volume cut out, but they could see what I was doing you know, physically and decided they wanted to have me back. And they brought me back with one other guy. I was uh, sitting and waiting in the, in the waiting room uh, for this guy to go. I was sitting next to Malik Yoba who played uh, Uncle Vernon and just felt like, you know, I'm, I'm a spiritual guy, I'm a Christian man. I just felt the angels with me. I walked in there, knocked it out, and we got the part. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, let me ask you this. When you first read the script of The Three Brothers, what was it about Andre that resonated with you? I love that he had different layers. You know what I mean? It, uh, the, the other, everybody has layers, but, you know, he's very complicated and, and a little and dark. Not even a little dark. He's a lot dark. You know what I mean? But I like those characters. They, they appeal to me more because there's, I think of humanity as, is, you know, being able to be very dark. And he, of all the brothers, for me, was the person that I resonated with as human, as more human than anything else. Not just a superstar, not that they're not human, but, you know, there's something working in him that works in all of us. And there's a story that needs to be told that I feel as though I would be very useful in. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, it's, I, I love his, this character every season, but this season in particular, there's a serious evolution process going on where, you know, it's, it's been a bit of Jekyll and Hyde, and now we have to figure out whether, you know, the real him is actually Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. You know what I mean? Is he the, the man trying to do right, or is he the monster, you know what I mean, who's willing to do anything? 
And really, I mean, you need someone like him to make the trains run on time because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's no there's no use, uh, you know, having an Empire Stream if if there's no one put, yeah. buying the equipment. To He's make running the, the number. Yeah, you have to have a numbers guy. You have to have a brain there. But the good thing about him, what's always been good, and now what's coming to the surface is he's not just brains and numbers. He's gangster. And it just, it gets, it gets, I mean, we're trying to do our ode to the Godfather, and this season he is definitely Michael Corleone. Oh, I part love that. Part two. <laughs> yeah, part two, the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. What do you think of this season? Which scene best encapsulates him as Corleone? Like, kind of that, that change in him. I think you have to watch. It's coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we tease the next episode? Well, the, well, you saw how the <clears throat> those of you who watched saw how the last episode uh, was well basically ended, and there's more to come. There's a promo out where you know uh, Shine is in the room and has a gun to Andre's back, and it, you know it, the, the the trigger could be pulled, a bullet could strike, a bullet could you know not you know w w there's so many things that can happen. I think you just need to be on the lookout, but. Um, the family is certainly still trying to get it together in turmoil. Cookie has situa you know, situation with Angelo. Lucius is still trying to wrap his hand around everything and control it like he does. You know, it's just there's a lot. You know, this season we're going so much more in depth with our characters and we're taking our time. Uh, something we haven't done in the past. I don't mind saying that, but uh, you know, it's it's just much more worthwhile to see where we're going. So just stay tuned and keep on watching, please. You guys shoot in Chicago. Do you have any kind of, when you wrap an episode, do you guys all go out to dinner? Do you have any kind of routine? We that, go that, home. It, you see all the stuff I we have to do? Yeah. I go home. Taraji wants to go home to her kids. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. No, you know, it's, it's, look, Chicago's a great city. There's a lot, the weather is terrible. But you know what I mean? Oh, I bet the winters are amazing. My Lord. <laughs> I, I've never been to a place where a coat couldn't help me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, I see people wrapped up from head to toe. You don't know if they're going to rob you or if they're just trying to be, you know what I mean, warm. It's nuts, but yeah. It's the kind of cold that freezes your nose it hair. It freezes your face. I, I feel like, I know it doesn't happen, but I feel like it happened to me. Like, my face got chapped. <laughs> it's cold. No, it's, it's the truth. I mean, it's... it's, it's yeah. So, when did you guys realize that Empire was changing television? I think uh, we saw the numbers rising. We were like, wow, this is actually, really? You guys, you know, it, the, the filming of the pilot was very, we were very, um, we we're anxious to do the, the work that we were doing, but we are also very trepidatious, uh, not knowing, you know, how people would, would respond to it, you know? Lee was terrified. <laughs> Lee was terrified. Dude is so confident. He Seriously? was terrified. You know, I mean, but the thing was, I mean, because he's 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 so very smart. He's you know, I mean, and, and comes up with things that other people don't necessarily tackle in the way that he does. It's it's fearless. I love it. Um, but it's just like you know, this is it was his first foray into television. You know, what can we get away with? How much of the truth can we tell? And how ugly can we get? You know, and it just surprised us all as the numbers grew and. I don't know, I think at the end of the season, we were all like, wow, we did it, and they went along with us. So it wasn't just about being, it wasn't really about being this big hit that changes anything. It was about the fact that we succeeded at our task of telling the story the way we wanted to tell it. And you guys, I think it's really commendable that there's no violence for violence's sake. I mean, you guys really, I think, strike... I think what really draws people into the show and what draws me into the show is not so much the violence, which I know is part of the storyline, but the family. Sure. And the fact, like, the family meetings yeah. and how the brothers, man, they are horrible to each other. And, you know... They love each other, too. You saw yeah. the, I mean, the elevator scene. I think that's the heart of them. The core of them is, is all love, you know? But they're all, you've caught them in a moment. You've caught them in a moment where they are trying to survive. And how they survive, what they need is in the other person's hands. And some people you know, try and get it from you lovingly. Some people try and tear it away from you. And then you find yourself in a desperate situation. You know, they, you've caught them from season one in a very desperate situation. But there are little, you know, bits and pieces of, of their relationship that you can see, wow, they, they genuinely love each other. And I wonder what it looked like before, you know, all hell broke loose. Before the parents yeah, yeah, started yeah. fighting. That's right. What part of Andre is the closest to the real you? Um, I think that, I mean, he's educated. I value education like immensely and um and family family he's a he's a family man i'm certainly a family man i have a big fa my family i'm sure prepared me for families such as this you know what i mean like i'm sure everybody's got their people but you know my people are from the south 
And you know what I mean? Not, nothing bad about the South is actually great. There's so many characters that you can, you know, pull from. And, and I, I use some of those in, in my depiction of, um, of Andre. What do you want Andre to accomplish by the end of the season? I, you know, the whole ride has been about identity. I want him to find out who he is, good, bad, and ugly, for whatever it's worth. You know, he, he just he to needs to it. know and own it and live in it. And I feel like he probably will. Do you know how it, how the season ends yet, I or no? I don't, I don't. How soon do you guys get the scripts? Uh, it used to be like the day before or two days before. That sudden, and it's a lot of work to do. Um, we're, we're better about getting um, scripts a, l- a little bit more in advance to prepare now. Maybe just a couple of days, but you know. Oh, Lee's so generous. Huh? Lee's so generous. Lee's very generous. Lee's very generous. Yeah. I'm just I'm giving him a hard time. No, no, I no. Think he's great. He's, I think he's great. He's an I, awesome hey, guy. Hey, he gave me a job. <laughs> yeah, nobody loves him more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and before we go to the audience, yeah. I wanted to ask you when you read a script, mm-hmm. what was the most jaw dropping Andre moment that you read? Like, where you were like, holy shit, I can't believe this just, this is happening. Ah. Uh. He has so many moments, and I take liberties with some of those moments, too. I think that the thing that got me the most was the bib, that we were actually going to put a bib on my wife, and she was going to do what, you know, what she did. That's, that's the thing. Like, wow. Yeah. 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 That's Empire. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and to our audience, please. Hi. Hi. I want to ask you, um, if the relationship between Andre and Nessa that goes further would Andre stop hallucinating Rhonda? And also Rhonda, it was never really confirmed who actually pushed her down the stairs. Was it Anika? Those are Come all on. great questions. No, because she's spot on. You're spot on, I think. Well, as, Wait, as it far was as confirmed who pushed her down the stairs. No? No? Keep, all right. All right I'll, go I'll, back and I'll, watch. I'll, yeah. Go back and watch. I mean, this is just, we're, we're talking opinions here right now. So uh, <laughs> with and- I, I, I'm glad that you picked up that, first of all, Rhonda is a hallucination. She's not a ghost. We're not having ghost threesomes. <laughs> but yeah, no, you know, um, I, I, I pay close attention to the way that Andre deals with Nessa because um, Andre is still in the process of, of mourning, grieving his, uh, the loss of his wife and his family, his, his whole life, you know. And uh, the thing that Nessa has is a gift of music. And maybe that might be, you know, profitable to Andre down the line, you never know. So what that relationship is could be a little bit more shaky than just, you know, a romantic involvement. You don't know, you never know. Um, and yeah, I, I maybe that somewhere down the line, you know, it, I think Andre might be able to get his strength, you know, in a manner where he can do his own work without, you know, having his wife. But she's such a she's such an integral part of his life. You know, she she was, you know, M to his lady M. I got to be careful. I don't even know if this is this considered like a stage for people acting here. No. Do whatever you. Okay, I just I, I I you know I don't say the M word, but um yeah so yeah with that and um. As far as Anika, I mean, you know, let your eyes be, you know, your eyes are your, your own barometer. I think that, you know, if you think that she did it, cool. If you don't think she did it, that's cool, too. It doesn't change the character, you know what I mean? <laughs> next God question bless you. Pl- next, <laughs> next question, please. Okay, so, huge fan. Bless you, bro. There's a huge cast of personalities there. Give me the funniest moment, because I know there are a lot of funny people there. Like, that you... Bust out just. I mean, it's, I can't, I can't, this, all the dinner scenes are hilarious, you know, because we're sitting there shooting these, there's so much coverage to be, you know, had, and we are there sometimes from 9 to 11, 10, 12 hours, you know what I mean? And we got to stay entertained. So somebody's always saying something, and it's almost always Taraji and Jesse, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and Jesse. Jesse's yeah. He's he he goes nonstop. He's <laughs> it's great. It's all. I mean, it's all entertaining. Me, I'm you know, I'm your boy in the corner trying to read my book and ear hustling a little bit every now and then because what they say is so funny. But I can't just you know limit it to one thing, man. Everybody's a hoot. Everybody you know is family and they feel free to be who they are. So that's that's how that goes down, brother. You got it, man. And last question, please. I actually have two questions. Thank you so much for being here. Bless you. Thank you. I actually heard you singing on a show, and you are an amazing singer. So I wanted to know if in the near future will you be taking like more singing roles? And my second question is, what advice would you give for someone looking for love? Someone looking for love. Oh. So deep. Oh. Oh my God, you're about to make everyone melt. That's now. so deep. 
All right. Um, you know what? I I I I look at the to t tackle the role question first. You know, I said it before. I'm a Christian. I I look for the roles that have that uh, a voice for me. You know what I mean? Uh, so if it sings, you know, hey, I love Sam Cook. I'd love to play Sam Cook. You know what I mean? But um, who, you never know what what you know God has in store, what destiny has in store. So just open to whatever you know comes along the way. If it's within the voice, within the realm uh, that or has the voice that uh, I, I hear resonated within me. Uh, as far as love, I don't, you know, I, I had to trust me. You know what I mean? I had to get rid of, um, I had to get rid of things in in my life and, and quiet everything down before my wife came. And um, I think that, that that's, that there's something to what you believe love to be and what you see love to be. I think that we all have different truths. We all are waiting for that thing to satisfy us. But what is love? You know what I mean? And I, I think I had this question. Somebody asked me this question this morning. Love to me is servitude. And when you're willing to serve, you know, it, it encourages others to serve and to give of themselves in a way that is uh, the least selfish, the most selfless. You know what I mean? And I think that there's something in that that you can see and, and allow to resonate with your spirit so that you can see through your spirit's eyes instead of, you know, the eyes that you have that society has influenced, that maybe friends have influenced, and you can know what's right for you. So I'd say quiet your world, sister, and listen with your spirit. That's amazing. Thanks for asking that. And... When can we watch the next episode? Uh, the next episode, yeah, well, the World Series is on tonight. Go Cubs. Go Cubs. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so next Wednesday, uh, I think that's the, what, what day is that? The 7th or the 8th of November? I don't know. Time escapes me. But next Wednesday, uh, Wednesday nights on Fox. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs>